It's time for Fibber, McGee, and Molly. Sundays through Thursdays, NBC brings you Fibber, McGee, and Molly transcribed. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Len Levinson and directed by Max Hutto. Before we get into our story, let's see what the McGees are so enthusiastic about. McGee, toss me that ball of yarn, low and outside, boy. What's this low and outside business? <laughs> I'm getting hip to the baseball jargon that's in Prudential's new book, Baseball for Boys. Oh. You know, after reading Ed Matthews' article on how to bet, I bet even I could knock the cover off that old apple. I can see myself explaining that to the neighbors. <laughs> anyway, imagine what a kick junior ball players will get out of this wonderful Prudential baseball book. Right. Big league stars like Brooklyn's Duke Snyder and the Phillies' Robin Roberts give straight from the dugout tips on playing every position. And how about those pictures, McGee? They're big and clear, and they really demonstrate things. And Prudential's baseball for boys is a natural for Dad, too, to help him keep up with his son's favorite game. Want your free copy real quick? Write a postcard with your name and address and the words Baseball for Boys on it. Send it to Fibber McGee and Molly, Box 1212, Newark, New Jersey. That's Box 1212, Newark, New Jersey. Or just ask your Prudential agent. Man's desire to keep his name alive for posterity has resulted in many great monuments. There was Cheops and his pyramids, King Arthur and his round table, General Burnside and his sideburns, and now, Fibber McGee and his 1,000 raised printing business cards. Business cards? Yours? Yep. Have one, my dear. Here you are. Mr. F. McGee, Esquire. McGee Enterprises. Uh. 79 Wistful Vista, phone Vista 4366. What in the world is this? Just feel the printing on it, kiddo. Run your finger over it. It's embossed. Raised. See? Some class, huh? Hmm. Yeah, very fancy. Mm -hmm. Here. No, 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 you keep it. You can have it. I've got plenty more. One thousand, in fact. A thousand expensive cards for what? For three and a half bucks. Oh? They were running a special down at the Pen Wiper Press and Print Shop. Actually, I haven't really got a thousand of them anymore. Already handed out about 20 or 30 downtown. You know, to friends, acquaintances, fellow businessmen. Well, I hope you'll pardon my curiosity, but just what is this McGee Enterprises? Or should I say, what are the McGee Enterprises? Well, who knows? These cards, my dear, merely notify the general public that whatever kind of business opportunity they want to bring me, I'll listen to it. You see, the way I look at it, Molly, I'm an enterprising guy. And if an enterprising guy pries into enough enterprises, he's liable to come up with a surprise enterprise that's a prize. Right? <laughs> well, I don't like to be the banana skin on your stairway to the stars, dearie. But I somehow doubt that a business card will start a stampede of opportunities to our door. Aha. Uh -huh. This may be a call that'll make you eat your words before you get them out of your mouth, Mrs. McGee. Wisp of Vista 4366. Hmm? Yes, this is McGee Enterprises, all right. Yes. What did I tell you, kiddo? Whom, may I ask, is calling? Oh, the phone company. All right. What's your proposition? Hmm? You what? I what? Yes, but, 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 but what? You, you what? Well, now, I don't think, I don't, wait a minute, I don't think that's fair. You know what that guy said? Whatever it was, I don't think it was good. Some nosy parker down at that phone company got a hold of one of my cards, and they're going to change our phone from residence rate to business rate and charge for every call. Oh, dear. By George, they're not going to hold me up like that. I may just decide to put McGee Enterprises into the phone company business and bust them guys right square in their big fat monopoly. That's where I'll bust them in the monop. We'll see if they can do it. Calm down, Enterprises. We've got a visitor. I'll get it. If this is business, kiddo, I'll look busy. I'll be on the phone. You know, big impression. Oh, good afternoon. Is this the office of the McGee Enterprises? I do hope I have the right address. Oh, our uh, business, uh, yes. This is the place. Step right in. I'm most anxious to see the head of the firm, Mr. McGee, I suppose. There is a Mr. McGee, isn't there? Is he in? Oh, I do hope he's in. Yes, yes, he's in. His private office is right this way, in the living room. Mr. McGee, here's a lady to see you. Okay, yes, Addison. Sell the diamond mine and buy me another railroad. Right. Anything left over, just keep it for your trouble. That's quite all right, Addison. That's the way the McGee Enterprises does business. Bye. 
Oh, good afternoon, madam. What can I do for you? Oh, you are, Mr. McGee. Mr. McGee of McGee Enterprises, just like it says on this card. That's him, all right. Oh, I just love the way you big businessmen do big business, and such big business, big. You do everything in such a big way. You big, big businessmen. <laughs> Well, we of McGee Enterprises are never too busy to talk business, madam, so sit down. Oh, you are sitting down. Now, uh, what kind of enterprise are you interested in? Well, I know you're just terribly busy buying and selling railroads. And diamond mines. Yes, so I'll be very brief. I'm in charge of the big business division of our first annual charity drive for the relief of aged and unemployed simians. Uh-oh. Charity drive? Sis- simians? What the heck's Monkey thing? business. Oh, I know you're going to be just terribly generous, Mr. McGee, because when I tell you the tragic plight of this poor little chimpanzee on television... Yeah, but, 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 ...who I... suffer so terribly, your heart will break. Yeah, but, 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 but... Think of these poor little monkeys who give the best years of their lives to some television program, and then when they're old and tired and no longer photogenic... Oh... Pardon me, I've got some fish to fry. Yeah, but wait, Molly, don't go... They're wait. cast aside, friendless, and with no means of support, and reduced to stealing bananas from pushcarts to live. Yeah, but, lady, uh, Molly, lady... Why, even a thousand dollars from a man like you would mean to these suffering creatures, and I know a generous heart like yours. Back to Wistful Vista in a minute. An open book leads to an open mind. CARE, the government-approved non-profit relief agency, is trying to show the people of Europe and Asia the way the free world lives. It is doing it by means of books which tell the story of America in pictures, prose, and poetry. They are the answer to the untruths which are being told about America abroad. CARE has an American bookshelf of 99 volumes. They are the kind of books Americans read. They may be sent for just $30. The name of the donor appears as a book plate on the headboard of the bookshelf. Individuals, groups, or organizations may forward the CARE bookshelf on a personalized basis the designated libraries, schools, affiliates, or individuals, or the selection of a recipient may be left to care. The U.S. government has endorsed the project. It's your opportunity to counteract anti-American propaganda. Contribute to CARE Los Angeles or CARE New York. CARE Los Angeles or CARE New York. Look, bud, any time I want to buy a commercial vehicle license for 49 bucks, I'll call you. Dead, red, and money-grabbing bureaucrats. How do you like that, Molly? Uh, dearie, uh, there's a gentleman... Auto license bureau. Wanted to know if I'm using my car for a truck. 49 bucks they wanted for a truck license. And... Oh, I didn't see you standing there, bud. How'd you do? You're Mr. McGee of McGee Enterprises. Well, that depends on what you want. I'm Watkins, City Zoning Commission. Oh. Just got hold of one of your business cards, and I'm here to tell you that you... Can't run a factory at this address. Factory? Who's running a factory? That's what I want to know, mister. This neighborhood is zoned for residences only, period. Now, your card says McGee Enterprises. Pardon me, someone at the back door. Uh, Just what kind of business is McGee Enterprises? Frankly, Buster, I haven't quite decided, so you just Oh, come now, a man doesn't go into business till he decides what kind of business he's going into. (sighs) Have you requested a zoning change for this property? Because you'll have to come down to City Hall, fill out a form, file a fee, and wait 60 days. And I can tell you right now, you won't get it because... Look, bud, I only had some cards printed up today with my name, address, and phone number. The printer, he says to me, he says, you've got room for another line. He says, why not put down your business? Uh So I merely says to him, I says, put down McGee Enterprises. Because I figured, what have I got to lose? I'm not in business yet. I'm not running a factory. And any time I need a zoning change, I'll come downtown and look you up. Personal. Now, if you'll just take your foot out of the door, I'll be able to close it without cutting off three or four of your toes. Goodbye. In all in the world he did, Doctor, was have some business cards printed up. I know. He gave me one. And by the way, just... What does McGee Enterprises mean, McGee? That's a question he's been asked all day, Doctor, by 14 different people. As a matter of fact, Fatso, I merely had the printer put that McGee Enterprises line in just so I'd have something to start off a conversation with. And it's caused plenty of conversation, believe me. Have you heard from the sales tax people yet? Or the health department? Has the fire inspector been here? That's a stupid question. Why would anybody want to inspect our fire? I'll let that pass. How about your Social Security serial number and your withholding taxes, and then there's always... Uh Uh-oh, here we go again. 
All the red tape a guy has to go through when he ain't even in business yet. What would it be like if I was in business? The darn it. Yes. Mr. McGee of McGee Enterprises, I just heard about your company and dropped over to talk to you. Oh, well, come in, bud. What can I do? I'm from the City License Bureau, Mr. McGee. Oh, for the... My chief sent me over to find out just how long you've been conducting a business concern, establishment, or more specifically, an enterprise here in Whistle Vista without a license. Look, bud, I'm not conducting anything. I'm not doing any business, and the way it looks now, I never... <laughs> oh, please, don't insult my intelligence, Mr. McGee. I haven't noticed any so far. Now, let's face it. A man doesn't go out and have a lot of business cards printed unless he's going in business. Well? You'll have to have a business license, take out a sales tax certificate, have to collect city sales tax on all sales, you know. Then you'll have to file a notice of intent advertised in the legal columns. And if you're in the manufacturing business, there are several other forms for factories to fill out. Then your health code inspection. Yes. And say you didn't tell me what McGee Enterprises is going to make. Well, you just hop down to your city hall and tell your boss that the only thing McGee Enterprises is making is a nervous wreck out of McGee. Better still, I'll ride downtown with you. But I'm going to get this thing settled once and for all, and when I'm through by... McGee, is that you? Where'd you go? Downtown, kiddo. City Hall. And I don't think we're going to have any more trouble with them red tape wranglers from here on in. Oh, good. I dropped by the print shop on my way down, and the rest of the afternoon I spent at the city hall, passing out business cards. Oh, no, that's how you got in trouble in the first place. That was the old cards, my dear. I had a new batch printed up. Here, have one. Let me see. F. McGee, Esquire, 79 Wistful Vista, retired. Not connected with any enterprises. Retired. Repeat, retired. <laughs> <laughs> I papered the city hall with them babies. If that don't do it, I don't know what will. <laughs> You're a... Deborah and Molly will be right back. Like adventure? Like to laugh at good comedy? Then Thursday night is your night for wonderful radio listening on NBC Radio. There's adventure aplenty when Roy Rogers rides the range in an exciting tale of the modern-day Wild West. Even today, there are still bandits, rustlers, and desperados. It takes Roy to keep things peaceful-like. Dale and the rest of the gang tag along to lend Roy help when he needs it. As added enjoyment, Roy has a Western song handy. Hearing Roy sing really makes you yearn for the wide-open spaces. You'll enjoy the Roy Rogers Show, heard Thursday evenings on NBC Radio. And for comedy, you'll want to join your old radio friend Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Gildy manages to come up with a few comical problems that could only happen to the water commissioner of Summerfield. Yes, Thursday night is your radio night on NBC. Your night to enjoy high-flying action on the Roy Rogers Show. And every night, Sunday through Thursday, to visit with the great Gildersleeve. Know why NBC leads the rest with the best in radio entertainment. <laughs> at the door, Molly. Who was it? A gentleman from the city hall. City hall? Yep. Said he just learned that McGee Enterprises was going out of business. Seems it takes 27 legal forms and a letter from your lawyer to do that. He's coming back tomorrow. What? You mean I can't even get out of a business that I never even got into in the first place without... <laughs> Relax, McGee. Mama's only kidding. Huh? That was Sally Nelson returning my cake pan. Oh. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> Trevor McGee and Molly is an NBC Radio Network production transcribed with Bill Thompson as the man from the License Bureau and Arthur Q. Bryan as Dr. Gamble. The woman was played by Arlene Harris and Watkins by Arthur Jacobson. This is John Wall saying, so long, see you tomorrow. Join the great Gildersleeve and all his friends tonight on the NBC Radio Network.